Now let's take a look at example number four and get some more practice with this idea of using this independence rule to calculate probabilities. Let's see what we have here. A computer technician is trying to decide how best to manage his time. When performing certain repairs and or maintenance, he knows that he will usually find that he has to run some combination of three different tasks. Well, based on past experience, the technician knows that there's an 80% chance that he will have to run a full system scan. A 75% chance that he'll have to check recent server logs, maybe to find if there's a problem. And uh, you have to perform updates maybe about half of the time. Assume that each of these tasks needs to be done separately and check different things and therefore are operating, very importantly, independently. Okay. Well, you'll notice here that I have a little bit of space up at the uh, top before I jump into part A, and that's because I'm probably going to want to go ahead and think about all the information that I've been given, maybe develop some shorthand and keep track of what the different numbers up here mean. So how about we come up with some different symbols here for each of the different things that this technician might need to do. So we know there's an 80% chance they might have to run a full system scan. Okay, so how about we have S stands for scan, okay? Um, we'll maybe say, let's see, we have, uh, we have to check recent server logs. So how about L stands for uh, check the logs? And uh, we have to perform updates. How about we let that be U? So this is perform updates. Okay, and notice that we're actually given some probabilities for each of these, right? Probability of doing the scan, probability of checking the log, and probability of performing an update. Well, we're told that it's an 80% chance that we have to run the full scan. We're told that it's a 75% chance we have to check the logs. And if you only have to do updates half the time, that would be 50%. Okay, so this is kind of the information that we're starting with. Let's take a look at part A. Find the probability that all three of the tasks need to be completed. Okay, no big deal. Let's see, so that would mean I would need to do the scan and, I'm gonna use my shorthand notation here again, I need to check the log and I need to do an update. Now again, since these events are independent, I know that I can actually go ahead and say, oh boom, I'm just gonna calculate probability of S times the probability of L times the probability of U. And fortunately, I already have all of those numbers, so I'm just gonna do 0.80 times 0.75 times 0.50. I'll crunch out that answer and I'm good to go. And I think if you actually did type all that into a calculator and crunch it all the way out, you could double check me, but you think I get 30%. So there's a 30% that, that, that this guy's going to have to show up and do all three of these items. Great. Take a look at part B. Can I write out a sample space for this experiment? That is, a sample space for what are all of the different things that this guy might have to do when he shows up on the job? Well, we've already kind of seen one of the options, right? Like he might have to do all three of the tasks. That's possible. I have to do three different things. But that's not obviously the only thing that could happen. Maybe he only has to do two of the things, right? But the interesting question would be which two? Well, if I'm looking for a sample space, I want to write down all the possible options. So maybe I start by saying maybe he has to do the first two, but he doesn't have to do the last one. So I'll mark that U complement. Oh, but notice um, he could also do maybe the first and the last and not the middle one. Oh, wait, but he could also maybe not do the first one and just the last two. You can notice here, almost on this diagonal, I kind of have each individual item excluded one time. Okay, so these are some options. This would be if he had to do two things. Does he have to do two things when he shows up on the job? Well, not necessarily. It's maybe possible he only has to do one thing. Maybe he only has to do S, and he doesn't have to do either of the other two things. Or, maybe he has to do L, but not the other two things. Maybe he only has to do U, and not the other two things. Notice again, you can kind of follow this diagonal and see that each individual thing he might have to do is represented one time. So you can see here that what we're shaping up is we have, he could have to do three tasks when he shows up on the job. He might have to do two different tasks. He might have to just do one task, or I guess there's one final option. 
maybe he doesn't have to do any of the tasks. I mean, that would be a pretty easy job, but it's totally possible. Okay, so this would be a sample space, like of all the things that could actually happen. Now, again, it's important to note, I have here eight different possible things that could happen. Does that mean that each one of them has a one out of eight chance of occurring? No, no, definitely not. Because notice, even here in the first uh, case of three tasks, we know that has a 30% chance. And that's not the same as one out of eight. So these tasks can all have different likelihoods of occurring. I can't assume, again, just because I have eight options, that there's going to be uh, each one of them has like a one out of eight chance of happening. Not true. I have to calculate each one of those probabilities directly. Well, if you take a look at the next page, you'll see the types of probabilities that I'm going to be looking for. Part C. Find the probability that exactly one task will need to be completed. Now notice, I don't specify which task, I just say one of the tasks. So if I want probability of exactly one task, I can see up above, oh darn it, there are three different ways to do one task. And so unfortunately and painfully, I'm going to have to find these three separate probabilities and add them all together. Notice I'm just going to copy down each of those scenarios here. And then we're going to have to figure out how to calculate them. Okay, so hopefully these scenarios here represent those three different ways that we could have done one task. But again, since the events are independent, this isn't too difficult to actually crunch out. Notice the first one is just probability of S times probability of L complement times probability of U complement. The next one, probability of S complement times the probability of L times the probability of U complement. And so on, so on and so forth down the line. Now, since we already know the probabilities of L, U, and S, I think this should be pretty easy. I'm going to go ahead and down here, I'm going to just quickly write out again. Remember that our probability of S doing the scan, that was an 80% chance. Probability oops, of doing the, um, the checking of the logs, that was 75%. And the chances of actually doing the update, that was only 50%. So here's just a quick reminder. So let's see what numbers we would fill in here. Probability of doing the system scan, 80%. Probability of not checking the log. Well, if there's a 20 or 75% chance to check the log, there should be a 25% chance to not have to check it. What about not doing the update? Well, that's kind of a 50-50 split, right? Because there's a 50% chance that you do have to do the update, so 50% chance that you don't. So here's the probability calculated for the first um, event that I have up there. Well, now let's take a look at the next one. What are the chances that I don't have to do the scan? Well, that'd be 20%. I check the log 75% of the time, and I don't have to do the update 50% of the time. Okay, great. So that's my second probability. I'm just putting them in parentheses here to kind of group them up a little bit so they're a little bit easier to see as separate items. Doing the last one here, notice I'm going to get 20% multiplied by 25%, multiplied by 50%. So if I was to crunch each one of these out, I would end up, I believe, with the following numbers. For the first one here, I end up with 0 0.10. So I get 10%. For the next, 0 0.075. And for the last one, 0 0.025. If I add all that up, it's 20% total. So I can see then that while my first item up here of three tasks had a 30% chance of occurring, this task had 10%, this one here had a 7.5% chance, this one here had a 2.5% chance of occurring. Notice they're all different probabilities. So if I group all these three together, there's a 20% chance that I land in the one task category. Okay. So far, we've actually found four of the eight probabilities. Not too bad. Let's take a look at part D. Find the probability that, oh, here we go again, at least one task needs to be completed. 
I'm going to go back and look at that sample space to help me out. I want at least one task. So which of these things am I interested in finding? If I want at least one. Well, yeah, that would be all of these over here are one or more. One is the least. It's only this last case that I'm not interested in. So I can think here. I could find at least one task by finding one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different probabilities and adding them all together. That's not too bad because I already found four of them, so I just have to find three more. Or a much shorter approach. The probabilities for all of these events have to add up to 100%. So why not take 100% and chop out the only thing that we don't want? I'll write that in the following way. I want the probability of at least one task. That's equivalent to 1 minus the probability of 0 tasks. And I know that I do 0 tasks if I don't do the scan and don't check the log and don't do the update. And since I was told these are independent, this is the same thing as calculating probability of S complement times probability of L complement times the probability of U complement. And when I go ahead and actually write in what these are, this is 20%, 25%, and 50%. So let's see, this is going to be 1 minus 0 0.0, what I think this comes out as 2.5. So notice that we're saying that the chances of doing zero tasks has about a 2.5% chance. So if I take that away from 100%, I'm going to get 0.975. There should be a 97.5% chance that this guy's going to have to do something when he shows up, one thing or maybe more. Again, this one minus approach helps out a lot and allows us to use complements to shortcut the amount of work that we need to do. Now, we'll go ahead and take a look at example five in the next video.